kid that works here. All the Sims heads, come on over to the cool stream, why don't you? <clears throat> Let's try this little tune. Oh, yeah. This is a chill song. Same guy, Stephen Malcolmus. I think he put, uh, put out one recently, actually. I've not kept up with that. saying they wanted to, they were really interested in the cool stream, they wanted to watch it. Spheres Volume 2. I'm not ready to do the intro yet. I gotta drink some more coffee. Let's go, let's do that song again. Do -do, do -do -do -do. I need a martini if I'm listening to this song. Ended the game with a broad objective, flexible tactics, and several acceptable outcomes. Russian interests have been, for many years now, the subversion of Western institutions, principally NATO, but any will do. This subversion can take many forms. Driving wedges between U.S. Commonwealth Euro Intel cooperation. Driving wedges? Is he talking about his favorite salad? Wedge salad? Break up NATO, create chaos. This game has been developing for many years. It's asymmetrical and much cheaper than building a decent aircraft carrier. Plus, the Russians fucking rule it. <laughs> Always have. Ask a cold warrior. Mutual respect for our adversaries. They do perfect. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, Mucho respect to our adversaries. I meant to clip out parts of this game theory thing from my soundboard. That's why I played that. Uh, but I forgot that uh, you go about five minutes into the game theory um, thing from old Eric Garland and he starts getting really Islamophobic and that's I forgot about that so I listened to it again that came up and I was like okay that's where I'm, I'm getting off board uh, jumping off the Eric Garland train after hearing that crap 
But all the other stuff is good. It's funny. About mucho respect for our adversaries. And I have mucho respect for my my stream adversar adversaries, of which there are few. Um, we had a stream going earlier. A lot of people were watching. And uh, I'm just going to turn this into an ASMR stream now. Uh, all right. We're going to do the intro now. Yes, one do intro. Here we go. That's right. Yeah, we're doing the stream. Just doing some stretches, doing some yoga, trying to get all limbered up and juiced up and ready to go. Oh yeah. Love this song. Ready to do the big show today. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a special episode, so to speak, um, for those in the know. For those not in the know, if you're if you're the first time viewer, welcome. If you're if you've seen all the cool streams, then you have a special place in my heart in the Hall of Fame of Cool Stream fans. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And we're going to ramp up here and do a big intro, which is... Welcome to the cool stream, everybody. That's right, we're here. It's time to do the show. It's me, I'm B-Wolf, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. So sit down, get your water, get your hydration fuel, um, your electrolytes going. Have a big sip of some sparkling water, perhaps, and check out this show that we're doing here. It's called the Cool Stream. Let me blast some of these whoa uh, soundboards. That gets people going. They're like, "Oh, now we're in business. Now it's time to get crazy." Um, if, you, if you didn't know, last or this Thursday we did a special Cool Stream presents. That was kind of fun, and uh, and we looked at some crazy weird websites. And you can get to utilize all my soundboard stuff. But we're definitely gonna hit it today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Can't wait to talk about what I'm what I'm going to talk about today. And what could that be? Well, if you watched the last episode, you might know. What is that letter there? What? What is that letter there? Barga Barga, welcome to the cool stream, buddy. Thanks for following. We got all kinds of followers now. We're looking good. Everybody's looking good in the cool stream. Cool stream headquarters today. Myself, my team over here, everyone in the chat everyone across the world so here we go what do we got and i've got the sound cloud we were listening to this communism to reduce the okay cost. sorry <laughs> uh okay you know you know sometimes you do the stream and you just got things flying all over the place and try not to get too worried about people's perception of me or my show or anything like that and I just chill you know I've had a good day so far did my taxes um, did the cool stream taxes everybody's getting right getting their money government uh, everyone's paid handsomely here at the show and uh, we paid into all the great government programs that you know and love so we're feeling satisfied we got a lot done today and now it's time to stream so what are we streaming about today? Well, like I said, if you're a long time, uh, if you're a first time, long time, uh, I don't really know how that would apply to the sh to the cool stream. First, uh, that's sort of more when you do like a call-in show, which we don't do. Might, maybe we could try it someday. But if you're a long time watcher of the show, um, you may be familiar with what we're going to talk about today, which is a little something called Cedar Nut. <laughs> That's just kind of the catch-all term that I've, I've adopted for this particular topic. But there's a lot, of, a lot of layers to this thing, and we, what we've got here is an illustration that kind of sums up some of the things going on. We've got this lovely lady here with this orb of light and this beautiful woodland woodscape woodscape with a little uh, 
bobcat and some mushrooms and butterflies and it's beautiful so cedar nut there's a lot of stuff going on with cedar nut these days the cedar nut business is booming uh, we us over at the cool stream we were once in that booming business we had our wagons hitched to the cedar nut train and well sad to say we fell off the wagon but we're back and we're back talking about it and some like one company in particular that produces all the great cedar nut products and well you'll you'll see who that is who are the characters involved in this thing and what kind of weird stuff goes on with the cedar nut that's right let's just jump right into it all right who are we talking about who are the players on the grand stage uh, a second ago we were listening to the game theory rant and we was talking about all the big players on the global stage and that's kind of what some of these characters are in this story that we shall tell and there is a story there's a book there's a toothpaste there's all kinds of stuff uh, this probably makes no sense to someone who has never watched the show I'm on a cedar nut diet. I see dar nut and I eat it. Oh yeah. All right, my chat here is kind of messed up. Let me take the time out to do some modifications to my thing here. Let's see if that works. If not, doesn't matter. I'm chill today. This is chill, be wolf, and we're talking about cedar nut. All right. So. Where do we begin? First, I wish I had more preamble. Remember the other episodes where we talk about all kinds of weird stuff? We do ads, and the ads are kind of drying up. I don't really know what's going on. Um, I think Michi's last time I heard, they kind of want us to to bring more streams into the into the Amici's podcast network, which is a little awkward, you know. They really want Rat Brother on the, the network. They're really angling big time for him and kind of getting a lot of emails about, hey, why don't you talk to Rat Brother, get him on Michi's, see if he can get the DOS stream. So talk to Turbo, get him on there. Of course, the big fish of all would be, you know, something like Chris, or, but you know, they're, they're all independent. They don't need a network like we do. Frankly, we're... Um, we're doing great in the content sphere. We had the uh, Cool Stream Presents on Thursday. It was a lot of fun. And that's a little offshoot of the show. Much like this tangent that I'm doing right now is an offshoot of what I was previously talking about. So the Cool Stream Presents, check out the, VO check out the VOD for that one on Thursday. It was a special stream. We kind of went through some crazy old websites uh, from the Internet Archive. And we saw some pretty weird stuff, including a, a website. It was a, a presidential campaign, presidential election simulator for 1996. So it had fake candidates and fake stump speeches, and that was kind of weird. Um, and you can see as I read the website and forgot that it was a fake presidential election website, I got very confused. And then we also found the origins of a certain phrase, Make America Great Again, originated on this, on this fake presidential campaign. And I'm not talking about 2016, I'm talking about 1996, which was 20 years ago. And also on the stream, I did say that 1996 was 11 years ago, which is wrong. The math is wrong on that one. I'm way older than that. What is people saying here in the chat? What are we talking about? Well, gotta get the Rat Brother money. That's right. Heard that Ninja is joining Papa John's network. If true, that would be a huge coup for them. That's right. Papa John's network. They're really going for the big, the big streamers. So, yeah, check out that cool stream presents. We're gonna do a couple more of those um, as we go along. Look at some old websites. We'll do some other specials. It's kind of a special bonus episode. Um, whereas here on the main cool stream, we talk about weird crap and we play lots of sounds. Oh, and uh, it just gets weird. So it's about to get real weird today. I can't wait for this. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
let's just jump into it. First, I gotta get some music. And this is the perfect music, I think, to start us off, to start off the show about Cedar Nut. Oh, yeah, we're setting the scene for some really wild adventures of our friend. And this, the, our first character of this here story about Cedar Nut is our friend, this guy, Vladimir Megre. Vladimir Megre. Look at him. He's a nice Russian man, and he did something quite incredible in the industry of cedar nut. In the cedar nut industry, a true pioneer when it comes to cedar nut in, over in Russia, specifically over in Siberia, which is... Maybe I should pull up a map of where that is. Let's see if we can talk about... I may have to do a little map. And check this out. This is kind of cool. I'm going to open a new tab. This is a new trick we have on the stream. Check this out. Boom. We have a new tab, and we were not doxing our bank account. So that's kind of cool uh, to do that, to do a show and not dox yourself on it. It's kind of hard to do. So Vladimir Megre, who is this guy? Well, this is his website, so maybe we could check out a quick biography of Vladimir Megre. Check him out. There he is. He's a cool guy. A big mustache. So he was born. He's the author of Ringing Cedars of Russia book series. So he wrote some books about some crazy cedar trees. He's a well-known entrepreneur. Spent most of his childhood with his grandmother, Ephrosinia Verkusha, a village healer. Um, so he went to a monastery, and we're going to kind of fast forward through some of this. And he was an entrepreneur during the, the beginning of Perestroika, reforms of the late 80s, and uh, I believe that had something to do with the that one guy with the big splotch on his head. I remember being a kid and seeing that guy. There's a lot of jokes about that guy. Gorbachev. Tear down that wall. Seed or nut? That's what I'm asking when I see a pistachio. I don't know what it is. Seed or nut? Huh. Interesting. I never, I never thought about it like that. Is a peanut a nut? I think peanut is a vegetable. So there's some kind of weird veggies and nuts and things. And actually, well, we can explain this a little bit later about the seed or nut. We're going to get deep into it, but we're talking about Vladimir Megre. We did some stuff. He organized two large-scale trade expeditions with a fleet of river steamers and along the River Obe. Almost was going to make a joke about river steamers, but I'm going to move on. Along the route of Novosibirsk Selkogard at his own expense. So let's check out the map of where that is. Let's get an idea. Let's set the scene of where in the hell, where in the world is Megre, where was he going? Where's the River Obe? It sounds like um, something from a Game of Thrones book, but no, it's over in Russia, which is sort of a fantastical, magical, mysterious place, as we'll see as we get deeper into the story. Um, I'd love to visit this interesting country, although right now, uh, you know, not we're friendly. Some people are friendly with Russians, as, we'll, as, as we've seen by Mueller. Other people, not so friendly, as we saw when we listened to Eric Garland and his game theory. But we're friendly to the Russians over on the cool stream. So here we go. As we zoom out, there it is. Novo Zabrisk. Novo Zabirsk. It would be cool to know how to pronounce these also. But I didn't do my research. So here it is. It's way... Whoa. I'm zooming out way over on the edge of Siberia. We'll zoom back in. Can we see this? Are we liking this? This is kind of cool. We're getting back in, and we can see what the uh, coffee, the hotels, and restaurants are over by Novosibirsk. And we can see uh, some other <laughs> address. Get that. No. <laughs> Freaking cool stream. Is that close to Tarkov? I don't know. Uh, anyway, there it is, the River Obe. And he went down the river, and he harvested the cedar trees. 
on his on his trip he encountered someone Anastasia in the Siberian taiga and it changed his entire damn life it had been a secret for a long time for his relatives and friends what made him an entrepreneur with 10 years experience to pledge his property and spend his savings on unprofitable trading trips the mystery was revealed in his books with Anastasia as the main character Vladimir McGray brought something really invaluable from the trips and he brought some valuable stuff, some valuable cedar nuts. So what are they talking about? Friggin' cool stream. I'm going, Kilgore? Yeah. That's... Stop. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that's embarrassing. I was just bragging about how I don't... I'm not doxing myself. And then we saw where I did my taxes today. Where, where I did my taxes today. Alright. Don't come to my house. Don't attack my tax preparer lady. She's a very nice old lady. Anyway, that's Vla a little bit about Vladimir McGray. So what did he do? He went down the River Ob, um, and he got all up in the Siberian Taiga and harvested the trees. And he ran into somebody on that trip. Here's a little synopsis. So, and he also, and he wrote a book about it. And that's kind of what we're going to get into today. Is what went on, what went down on this, on this uh, adventure that he had over in this Siberia? Who was this mystery, mystery, mysterious mystery woman that he met? So here's a little synopsis of the book. This is over at Russia. Uh, I can't talk. RingingCedarsOfRussia.org. And it's the story of the Ringing Cedars of Russia book series. The story began in 1994 when the bank of the river Aube amidst the endless expanses of Siberian taiga. So we covered that, 1994. It's a couple years before the 1996 election with uh, the famous Democratic candidate, uh, Joe Bob Hamilton. And we all know that famous election. Anyway, uh, the well-known Siberian entrepreneur Vladimir McGray met with two elderly gentlemen who told him about the amazing properties of the Siberian cedar. Now, here's, well, here's where we get an explanation of the cedar. Hi, Wolf, can I have your tax refund, please? Thanks in advance. Oh, boy. HR block. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, oh, Come on, Kilgore, you're always welcome in the Beowulf household. Just, you know, you never know what kind of uh, weirdos are watching the show and are going to come to my house. And, you know, just, I'm just not sure. I know I don't have that many viewers to get any kind of wackos or radicals who want to kind of chase me down. Because we're pro, we're pro, you know. We're in the pro camp of all these things that we talk about. We're not going to get any angry Bigfoot supporters or angry Russian Cedar Anastasiasians to come get us because we love it. It's great. We love talking about it. So we love talking about Siberian Cedar. Now, what is that? What is that? Um, well, Siberian Cedar is actually Siberian Pine. So somewhere along the way, there's a little translation jump uh, where they, they call it cedar, but it's actually pine. So when we're talking about cedar nuts, we're actually talking about pine nuts, which is the famous ingredient for pesto. And you can make all kinds of good stuff with it. So just think about that when they're talking about cedar nuts and all the good things. Just pine nuts, pine trees. Yeah, I'll give you some of my tax refund. All right. All right. At first, he didn't pay much attention to what they told him, and that's the old men in the, in the Siberian, when he was going down the river Eub. But as he continued to reflect on it, Vladimir began to discover, in the historical and scientific literature he, he examined, more and more evidence supporting his words. Finally, he decided to organize an expedition with a fleet of river steamers. <clears throat> Still can't think of a good joke with that one. You got anything? Type it in the chat. The best I could come up with, with for river steamers was, hey, we're not talking about you know, beavers and their 
their craps that float down the river. Steamers, as in poop, like the steamer. That's okay. They wouldn't be steamy if they're in that cold, cold, f icy water in the Siberian tundra of the River Ob. And I love saying that. It's a great name. The expedition was ostensibly for commercial purposes. Interesting. Commercializing the cedar nut? What? Well, you could get some good stuff out of the, the trees, these big tall trees, like wood, and you could build stuff with it. But then you have the the natural byproduct of those dang pine cones. We all know when you have a pine tree in your front yard and the pine cones freaking get everywhere, you step on them, you're like, ow, 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 ow I hate these things. Um, and you can also extract the cedar nut and you can get all kinds of good stuff out of it. That's kind of what he learned when he met up, when he had a meeting that changed his life. So the, the exhibition, the exhibition, the expedition was for commercial purposes, but in actual fact, his overriding motivation was to find the elders again and learn more about the secrets of the cedar. The secret is they smell good. I love that pine smell. I should have had some going with my um, humidifier, a little, some, uh, what you call it? Essential oils. This stuff smells good. Having instructed his fleet's captain uh, to maintain their course, um, he was talking to the bald guy from Star Trek. Vladimir slipped away by himself at the exact spot where he had met two elders the previous year. So he went back down the river Eub. On the riverbank, he found a woman waiting for him who turned out to be their granddaughter. She called herself Anastasia. This woman, through the depth of her knowledge, her sincere love, and her outlook on the world, was, was to have a profound influence on Vladimir's whole life. Wow! I just get a clap for that. This is inspiring. I love it. At first, he saw her simply as a young, attractive woman, and so Vladimir was horny. He was on that boat, he was on his river steamer, all day and all night, down the river Ebe. He was floating along on his big steamer with his captain, and he was like, meeting up with these old guys, and he's like, damn, I'm all alone. And here we got a joke here from Beer Horse. We got a joke submission. And what's this going to say here? The ringing cedars. <laughs> okay. Of Russia are Slavs who exclusively provide bell music files on BitTorrent. That's pretty good. Kind of changed up the, um, the, the spelling there. When you're riding on a steamer, every deck is the poop deck. <laughs> That's right. You might get a little seasick, and you might get a little rumbling in your loins. So he gets off the boat. He meets Anastasia. At first, he simply saw her as a young, attractive woman. And I'm going to go back to that. He is a bit of a you know, nasty guy. We'll see. Uh, kind of explain when we read some of this book. Um, though she appeared quite knowledgeable about modern urban society. Huh seemed to be utterly naive in her aspirations to change that society from her remote location far off in the wilds of Siberia. Later, however, Vladimir came face to face with certain psychic abilities of Anastasia's which defied explanation even though they were undeniably real in his perception, inexplicably manifesting themselves in a tragic struggle of virtue against vice which unfolded before his very eyes. What is that? <laughs> what is that in reference to? Very strange. A tragic struggle of virtue against vice. Okay. And that's a tragic struggle. Not a heroic struggle. I don't really get that. I don't get a lot of things when I'm on the stream and I'm in the zone. So anyway, that's a little... Okay, what is this saying here? That's, that's some overview of... Uh, 
of the books here. We'll continue this little paragraph, and then we'll read from these crazy books. He was shaken by fonts, scenes somehow presented to him from his not-too-distant past. So he was shaken by fonts, scenes? Was he looking at the Wingdings font, where it has the little symbols and little... Uh, you can make a little scenery out of uh, some of those symbols there on that font. Uh, so somehow they were presented to him from uh, his not-too-distant past, but from a totally new point of view. Now able to look at his own and others' behavior more objectively, Vladimir gained a new appreciation of what Anastasia was endeavoring to do, and in an effort to help, he promised to fulfill Anastasia's request and write a book about his experience. So he went out there. I'm assuming this is uh, uh, translated from Russian. There's a lot of these websites, too. Um, we've got... Uh, ringing scenes of Russia.org, and then we've got uh, Anastasia.ru, and that's so you got a whole ton of these books. This is like freaking George R. R. Martin here writing a bazillion books, which he only wrote five. We're waiting on that last one, but uh, so we got book one, and these will these will run you ten nine ninety nine, not too bad. And actually, you can get them for free. We're about to read the free version. Yeah, you can see what he's up to, writing all these books. We've got some really cool illustrations on the front. This one's The Dimension of Love. Um, this one is Co-Creation. So, again, Vladimir, very horny. Learning about stuff from this blonde lady in the woods. Uh, this one is Who Are We? And this one, The Family Book. We've got The Energy of Life. The New Civilization, The New Civilization 2, Rites of Love. And we didn't get New Civilization 3. We're still waiting on that. Uh, Anna, Anasta. Uh, I guess that's the last one. So we got a lot of books, and there's a lot of fans of these books. People love these things. People get the books. They read them. They're inspired. They're like, whoa, this is crazy. These books are real, and they're not, of course. It's just a bunch of hokum gotta pay if you want to get the books in the Moby format. The Moby format? You're talking about a CD from the 90s? Ow! <laughs> Alright, not a lot of spots that I can throw in some of these crazy sounds. <clears throat> so, we're gonna jump over to one of our a favorite place there, the archive.org. And can we read this? Can we see any of this stuff? Um, this is the book. This is all ten books over at the archive.org, series one through ten, for free. And if we can jump to page one, there it is. That beautiful illustration, number one. The first book. Let's see, let's change up the music. Is that too much? <laughs> okay, let's go back to that creepy uh, atmospheric music. I don't know if that's... Is that appropriate to play that kind of stuff? It's kind of fun. Okay, don't cancel me, please. There he is, Vladimir Megre. Born in 1950. We read all about him. He was flabbergasted when he met Anastasia. Over on the River Ebe. I don't understand this part. It says the page, this page intentionally left blank just to press you off. What? Get a little sense of humor over there at uh, whoever published these. They got some reviews. Well, people love these books. We'll see some other reviews, some believers, some true believers of Cedar Nut. And some other stuff. I don't know what this is. This is some all... Okay, here we go. Chapter 1. Ringing Cedar, the meeting. So we want to check out. He's talking about going up the River Ebe and his captain, his steamer, and he's talking about the Olympic Olympic champion in wrestling, Alexander Carolin, currently unbeatable, is a Siberian. It's kind of cool. He's a strong man. He's eaten cedar nuts all of his life. Whoa! In Russia, people usually wish you a Siberian health, and that's because all those folks down there in Siberia just eat cedar nuts all day and all night and they just crap them out when they're done eating them. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here he's talking about Anastasia. 
let's see. Let's um, let's check out the meeting. I wanted to find the old men. She wore a shawl that covered her forehead and neck. It was difficult to tell her age. I said, hello, and asked her about the two men I had met there the previous year. You were talking to my grandpa and great-grandpa last year, Vladimir, comma, Vladimir, answered the woman. I was astonished. Her voice was young. Her articulation was very distinct. She was on familiar terms with me, using thou instead of you, which I guess is a reference to uh, the Russian language. It's kind of the formal speaking of that, which we don't really have in English, but it's common in a lot of different languages. So she uh, was very formal with him, and she called him by his name, kind of like that movie. She could, he couldn't remember the names of the old men, he didn't know, and he, she said, what is your name? She's Anastasia, of course. She stretched out her hand, the palm facing down as if waiting for a kiss. The kind, This kind of gesture for a village woman dressed in a quilted jacket and galoshes standing on a deserted bank and trying to behave as if she was a lady of society made me laugh. Well, okay. I shook her hand, but I did not kiss it. Anastasia gave an embarrassed smile and suggested I go with her to the Taiga. Is that how you say that? I'm not sure. Taiga, where her family lived. Although you know it is necessary to walk for 20 kilo- uh, 25 kilometers, does that disturb you? Well, this is Vladimir. Well, sure, it's pretty far away. Will, you'll be, will, will you be able to show me the ringing cedar? I shall, is what she said in response to that. And, uh... Then he asked, do you know everything about it? Will you tell me? She said, I'll tell you what I know. Well, let's go, baby. Late for the cool stream. Oh, we're reading from the dang Ringing Cedars of Russia. Number one, first edition. Uh, they went into the woods. She hadn't visited a lot of cities. I'm trying to find a good spot to read. She had perfect knowledge of civilian life. And we read that in our synopsis. I'm trying to find a funny part to read. That's what I'm doing here. S- well, suddenly she took off her jacket. This is after they walked for about five kilometers. Nastasia took off her quilted jacket, shawl, long skirt, and put it in a hollow tree, and only a short, light dress was left on her. I was astonished by what I saw. Okay, come on now. His, his horny level is rising. If I believed in miracles, I would categorize it as a miraculous transformation. Kind of sexist. A kind of metamorphosis. So, a metamorphosis of someone taking their clothes off and having wearing something underneath. Um, I was facing a very young woman with long golden hair and a splendid shape. Let's go back to that pic. There she is. There she is wearing her nighties, her little nightgown, out in the woods with her long blonde hair. And she's holding that crazy orb of light. Wow. So what else happened? Uh, so she says, are you tired? Do you want to rest? So they sat down on the grass, and he had an, an opportunity to examine her face. No cosmetics at all. Very regular features. Well-treated, perfect skin. And that's from those all those cedar nut things. Uh, oils that she probably uses. She had large kind of gray eyes and smiling lips. Huh. I think there's a comparison to be made to a certain group of blonde haired people. Could she be? In fact, she might be a plebeian. If you think about it, this is more compelling than anything Micro SFF has ever written. Um, I wanted to save this a little bit, but I'm really kind of thinking, you know, they talked about she had psychic powers, she just does all this crazy stuff, she's blonde. I think Anastasia is a freaking Pleiadian. I mean, think about it. She's got all the, she knows everything, she's blonde, she's hot. Hell. <laughs> She's got psychic powers. She's trying to help Vladimir and help our human civilization with all these lessons. And there's ten whole books of all the stuff he's telling her. 
She's telling him. I think she's a plebeian. That's what I think. We'll have some further proof as we go along. Um, so, uh, let's see. This gets really problematic. Can you believe that in this book? Uh, what does it say here? How could... Yeah, it gets very... Uh, it gets very problematic in this book. Basically, what happens is... He's so freaking horny for Anastasia, and he, uh, she, at some point, um, it's like they take a nap, and he wakes up, and I guess maybe it's over on this page. Oh, here, yeah. He gets very horny, and he tries to, um, he tries to, uh, do stuff with her which is very bad. So right off the bat, Vladimir, oh no, <laughs> there are 2,000 pages. No, we're not going to read all that. And yes, um, Beer Horse, she is a Pleiadian. She's a Nordic. I guess, yeah, Nordic, but, you know, Nordics and Russians, it's all kind of northern. I don't know. It's not real. Come on. Nothing is real. None of this is all a bunch of crap, <laughs> For reading it on the show. We're not going to read 2,000 pages, and this is 10 books, by the way. So, anyway, so Vladimir's canceled. He tries to get handsy with Anastasia, and she uses her psychic powers. Uh, she says, Harmony was unreceptive. Harmony's unreceptiveness of your attitude regarding me, I mean the desire which came to you for me. Later on, you will make it out yourself. What does it have to do with some kind of harmony? It was you who started to resist. That's right. Uh, me too. I did not welcome it. It was not pleasant for me. Unbelievable! Okay, we're not going to read that. It's very, very bad. But what he says next, which is... Uh, like, How could these woman, women walk around in their high heels and tempting men? It's really nasty, bad stuff. So Vladimir's cancelled right off the bat it's very bad but people love this book this is this is people love it so what why why do they do why do they like it i don't know well this lady here at paradise planet creator she looks like a freaking pleadian too so she's got a little review of it he says, Ring, "Ringing cedars of Russia series have had a very, have had a very key function in setting my passion and love for permaculture project on fire." Doesn't sound good. Maybe I don't know if you need to set that stuff on fire. Um, you want to let it grow. Ever since I learned about the powers of the universe, quivering in excitement with, when members of mankind begin to think about their own garden creations with a space of love for their descendants. I began acting on that idea in the framework given in my immediate environment. I could feel deeply connected with the invisible powers as soon as I had made a decision about what I wanted and began to act on what I intuitively felt I could do to fulfill my desire. Whew, it's a long sentence. I kept some details secret from my environment to protect my sensitive aspirations as they, and I don't know what she's talking about, but uh, Anastasia basically... Um, she changed a lot of people's lives. People love the books because pretty much the kind of stuff that they talk about in the books. And here's one about the supercomputer and the brain. It's kind of weird. But some of the stuff they talk about basically is just, uh, you know, living off the land. Kind of the, um, kind of like the hippie movement of the 60s here in the United States. Except without all the free love and, and the dreads and all that. It's just kind of like... Go out in the woods, live off the land, appreciate nature, all that kind of good stuff. You know, there are good lessons in these books if you can get past that dastardly uh, misogynist Vladimir. And if you can get past that, uh, it's all just kind of made up stuff. Um, there are some stuff that people have learned. The people of Russia learning about living off the land and creating their own. Um, what do they call them? Their family homesteads. 
So they go out and they build houses and they live off the land. It's kind of cool. And they they do cedar nut. I mean, I don't know if they all do cedar nut stuff. I'm not really sure because I can't read these websites. But there are a lot of these a lot of these spots around Russia where people live and they 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 uh, you know. They have they've learned lessons from the books and there's stuff about how they teach their kids and it's kind of a back to the land mentality. It's uh, so it's good for some people if they need that. Um, a lot of people take it very seriously and a little bit too literal. And I'm not trying to judge here, you know. It's the same literary tradition as Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. That's right. And over here on, and this is what cued me in on maybe she's a Pleiadian, but um, Anastasia. The possibility of creating a fly, flying saucer awoke an interest in me. If one takes into consideration only the principle of movement, movement as a hypothesis, still it is a new one. But a flying saucer is a very complicated mechanism for us terrestrial people. It is not a top matter of priority. That is why I decided that I would rather hear from Anastasia about something that I could understand right away. Uh, so he didn't want to hear about flying saucers. That something should not require any kind of specific research or investigations. It could be implied in practice as being very helpful and beneficial for all people. So they want to set about solving problems of the world with technology. And they talk about uh, solving problems of pollution and that uh, you're going to put this little box on the front of your car and it's going to suck up all the smog and all the money from the government is going to go to the people and really some radical stuff. Uh, sounds nice. Sounds great. Would love some of that. Bow, bow. Well, what else can we read on this book? What, what, what kind of, st what are we missing here? What piece of the puzzle do we need to fill in? Well, we got to talk about the cedar nuts, about all their special powers, and I'm sure one of these crazy websites has some information. There's a lot of products that you can get. Basically, uh, the cedar that Anastasia, that cedar nut oil, are its healing properties stronger or weaker than the pieces of the ringing cedar? The same, provided the nuts are gathered at the proper time and with the proper attitude toward the cedar, provided the tree bestows them of itself. So Anastasia taught old Vladimir that these cedar nuts would give have all these great healing properties and healing qualities. And all you need is let the cedar nut flow. And here's some unshelled cedar nuts. The cedar nuts are praised throughout the world as a nutritious, healthy snack. So you can check out recipes. You can get some oils. So if I had to guess... Oh my gosh, there's tons of websites. You can get all kinds of uh, proteins and carbohydrates. If I had to guess... My best guess of why, of who she is and why he wrote this book is that, you know, he was trying to do something with the cedar trees and thought, if I could just sell people on the, on, on the idea that they need these stupid cedar nuts that got a million of these things, they have no practical use, um, we're trying to harvest these trees for their timber, and we're left with all this agricultural byproduct of these cedar nuts, what should we do? Well... He probably read up on all kinds of New Age theory, and he was uh, he seems to be well-versed in some of those things. He read about the Pleiadians, he read about all kinds of uh, things, and he wrote this book and introduced this character so that people could, um, people could take this message and they could learn about the cedar nut and all of its great properties and learn about how to live off the land, and he could sell his damn cedar nut products. That's what I think. I'm not going to say it's a big scam, but uh, I don't think 
I don't think it's a hundred percent real. I think you can you can probably use some oils and things, and it's fine. It's just another, you know, it's a natural product. But I don't think it has all these crazy healing powers that they're talking about. What is this? Okay. All right. Healing cedar nuts. That's what we're talking about today. I guess I could keep reading the book. I don't really want to because it's kind of weird, but you could go check it out at thearchive.org and all the time that he spent with Anastasia learning about um, Jesus. Looks like here it says the Ten Commandments. All of his adventures with Anastasia and his, his you know, how he kind of did some bad stuff one time and she used her psychic powers and bow, blasted him on the head he slept in the forest with Anastasia he didn't do anything weird again hopefully not Anastasia's morning she has a cup of cedar nut coffee Anastasia's beam, an unusual thing and mysterious thing for me, staying at Anastasia's seemed to be her ability to see some people at great distance and watch their lives. Whoa, that's kind of crazy. Maybe other hermits also have this kind of ability. Uh, I don't think so. That sounds like some psychic stuff. She did it with the help of an invisible beam. She claims that everybody has it at their disposal, but people don't know about its ex existence and can't use it. Well, that's too bad. She affirms that till now man has invented nothing at all which doesn't exist in nature. The technique which makes televisions work is just a poor similarity to the great potential of this beam. So her technique she uses whatever radio beams beam out of her head and she reads people's minds. Now, Vladimir, tell me, what is your definition of a waking dream? Are many people able to dream? I believe that many people can dream. A uh, dream is when a man imagines himself in the desirable future. Okay, that's his, that's Vladimir's definition of a dream. And I think what he's saying is uh, his, his idea of a desirable future is a little bit of this. <laughs> Not wrong one is, okay, let me go back. Vladimir's idea of a, what does he say? Uh, desirable fu future. His idea of a desirable future in a dream is a little bit of this. So, because he's horny as hell, can't can't shake his horniness. Maybe if he had a couple drops of cedar nut, it would calm him down a little bit. I don't know if it has that kind of property. Maybe I need some of that. So that's the crazy book of ringing cedars and we got some videos I guess we can watch some videos I'm kind of losing steam here as that happens I get kind of sleepy uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do Vlad the impale her <laughs> what so I found this documentary It's kind of cool this is from the Canadian Academy of Mindfulness and the host of this show uh, I think his name is Alex by Michael King and Igor Rivenko, New Earth Destiny, an Anastasia-inspired documentary film. This is kind of cool. I read some of this stuff, and this is by a, f a guy. Um, he goes, Michael, New Earth visionary Michael King at divinejoy.org and breathlightbliss.com. So his perspective on it is he's a mindfulness guy, he's meditating to connect with the world, so it's a little bit biased in favor of the Vladimir, and you know he believes all the stuff, but it's kind of cool to see him go there and talk to all the folks and see everything as it is. You get a picture of what things are like over there. Um, it's kind of a cool documentary, if not a little bit slanted and biased in favor of kind of just believing all of it you know maybe hbo can do a net uh net, maybe hbo can do a netflix documentary that'd be kind of weird why the hell would they do that 
Now, uh, maybe HBO can do a documentary about Cedar Nut. And that's basically what we're doing right now uh, in audio visual form. So, so that ground, whatever. Started to come together around this idea without a problem. I just understood one more thing that That's Vladimir right there. You, for instance, will be talking to your people in your own words. Quite the spread there. And they will understand you. They would not understand me. Watermelon, and it is not because of the language differences, but rather the differences of mentality and perception. You understood the essence of Anastasia, and now you could deliver the idea in your own way. Took a dip in the pool. This what are your like, plans for the look at this guy. He's like, oh my god, Vladimir is talking about this woman again. Look at him. He's so bored. He hates this. Kind of funny. We're gonna go to the taiga first. It's the only plan I know. Okay, so they ask him, what are you up to? We've already been 18 minutes into this dock. He's got to Siberia. He's hanging out with Vladimir and the gang. He's like, what are you up to next? And he says, we're going to go to the Taiga, which is the Siberian, you know, where it all started. And their reaction was to laugh their damn heads off. Uh, you're like, why the hell would you want to go there? You dumb dumb. But hey, he's doing a, and this guy's like, come on. <laughs> A trip to Siberia. There she is. Uh, this documentary is very cool. It's got its own music. So. Here we are at the airport at the Novobrisk Airport and flying around. Siberian energies are profound. This could be on we HBO. We were certainly taken into a journey where all expectations had to be left behind. We packed quite light and were able to journey very swiftly through many different cities bordering the Ob River and the famous we had river quite there's a few their, synchronic there's their connections steamer. which we really felt we were taken care of uh, especially at a time in the transition between uh, the fall and the winter when the river freezes over mm, can play a little hockey over on the ice our interactions with the native people were both high vibrational and as well as experiencing some of the, the deeper sadness that is akin to what may be happening on the Native American reservations here in America. That's kind of cool. I want to know what those people are up to. I don't care about these. One of the really exciting Anastasias. things that we were able to do in the taiga was to actually go and pick blueberries and crowberries and cranberries and, and dance snozberries and the <laughs> this, yeah it's kind of funny uh just interrupting for a really bad joke i thought he was gonna go he should say it. we were able to pick cedar nuts into care about these damn snozberries cedar cones yeah allowing Whoa. the spirit and the energy that is so vital so Scott in the forest and uh, dwight we were blessed with being able to connect in with different animal The way this guy talks is kind of weird. And no had way. different experiences with eagles and bears. Oh, birds, well, you know, I don't think I would want to have an experience with a bear because I might end up like Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant. See that movie? He got hacked to shreds by that thing. Wow. Well, Fox, kind of cute. Give him a little pet on the head. We experienced the special vibrations wow. of Anastasia wow. and really felt her <laughs> in numerous yeah. dream states and connecting with her through deep meditation. That was a very incredible experience and being able to hike into the deep nectar of the Siberian cedars and spend a few nights yeah. out in the woods really allowing ourselves to deepen into what the cedar trees and what the simple message that Anastasia has coming from Siberia about connecting into the original paradise grid, the, the original, the original paradise grid. Civilization. 
Okay, and I don't think these people are of that. Thank you, Anastasia, for everything. <laughs> so, Anastasia is a, is a white lady. And the people, I believe, he made reference to Native Americans and these uh, people doing their traditional dance here I don't think are connected to the those uh, those traditions that he's talking about they're not connected to white people they are a different uh, different group and would be very interested to know more about them kind of what they're up to um, instead we're gonna learn more about the cedar nuts <laughs> and this weird book uh, by this crazy horny guy Instead of something interesting, which is uh, an interesting culture, interesting indigenous culture from a different part of the world. But no, we're going to learn about this weird cedar nut thing. You have given to us yeah. your air, your breath, your cedar, your, your cedar. cones, your, your cones. Breath. Now, freaking um, um, Vladimir was interested in the cones, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he, he he was interested in the damn cones. You know what I'm talking about? An inspiration. Wink, wink. Not just for us. He does kind of sound like world. Michael. <laughs> Michael. Every Scott. soul is awakening at this time. Oh yeah. What's this one? Eco Village Rodnoy. All right, so. Part of what I couldn't explain with reading stuff was a little bit about the eco villages, and this this is kind of cool. Um, people returning to the land, living on their own—it's kind of a cool thing. And if I was a smart guy, I could make some kind of comparison to the history of Russia, the fall of the Iron Curtain, and tear down that wall. Damn it! Ronald Reagan went over there and said, "Tear down the wall," and he smashed the dastardly communists and he uh, people could do whatever the hell they wanted to so in the 90s a bunch of people were like uh, what do we do I don't like uh, I don't like the day to day city life I want to go live in the country I'm sure a lot of people were already living there but some of the city folk uh, white folks over in Russia were like I want to try something else I want to go live in the woods it's kind of fun love to live in the woods and that's a cool house there so it's kind of like the you know, the hippies is what we call them of today the space itself helps a lot your every thought stays there around our settlement anyone can feel it especially children when they return from school they really feel like coming home yeah look at that could you imagine uh would love to be a little kid and be look at that cool uh, little helps a lot uh, little rope thing that they had you know, playing on that if you were kid you'd be like yeah hell yeah I'd be out in the woods jumping around in the cool rope ladders and stuff of course they like it out there it's chill af to have made an initial connection with um, one of the leaders and co-founders of the eco village red noya a very happy and boisterous man who was in fact like a What's he doing? big brown bear in well, <laughs> and just had such a great big open heart. He was very, very, very interested in connecting with us deeper, and we felt so at home in Red Noya, especially at Anatoly's uh, Kin Domain, where we were treated as not just guests, but family. When you're here, your family, when you're at the Eco Village Red Noy, yeah, it's been like seven people, first first settlers, uh, settlers here, who uh, paid money, prepared all the paperwork. But he was the man, main um, main man behind the all the paperwork, all the permissions and stuff, and acquiring this land. 
How many people live on the eco village now? Семей 40-50. Ну никто их не считает как бы. Nobody count them, but around 40 to 50 families. Okay. Есть где-то в районе 200 поместьй. So they live in um, together uh, in the in these areas. A bunch of different families live together and. They do homeschooling, and they eat their cedar nuts, and uh, they live out in the woods. Sounds like a hell of a good life, if you ask me. Um, it probably gets really, really fucking cold out there, if I had to imagine, living out in Siberia. I've never been there. It would be kind of cool to check out one of these eco-villages, have some good food, some good fun, some laughs, and when you're there, your family over in Siberia and I could wear my wear a little cedar a little slice of the cedar tree and say hello good day to you I am of I'm one with the cedar nuts and I'm nuts for the cedar nut but there's lots of other folks that love the stuff including this guy and see if I can move this around here well good morning <laughs> here I am at 1 11 a.m making a video i've already been up approximately an hour or a week these say. are some fans some nutheads as we call it really bad and then i couldn't get back okay. to sleep to take a big crap. so here i am making the video now i wrote the blurb yesterday I call the title of which is anastasia and ringing cedars author vladimir megra megra one person making a comment on a recent video called anastasia fiction Ooh. Obviously, he never read the books. Already, ten years ago, they had sold oh. over a million copies. Well, and he never read the books. I read the book. I read the first chapter, or first couple chapters. Doesn't seem real to me, just because it sells a million copies. I mean, could you, you know, a lot of books that sell lots of copies. I mean, the Bible. Uh, I guess that's probably a bad example, because that's real. Uh, what's another book that sold a million copies? Like one of the Star Wars books or something? Shadow of the Empire? Is that one of the books? That's not real. In Russia alone. Since then, they have been translated into at least 20 languages. You went being there. read by people around the world. Many of her projections have come to pass. Harry also Potter. Bear in mind That's right. That the author, Vladimir Megra, had no experience Megra. as a writer. He Anastasia is one of the muggles? Is that a Harry Potter thing? I haven't seen those movies in a while. Some of what Anastasia told him, not at first. And uh, so Yet Vladimir... Yet he's still traveling the world talking about the revolutionary shut up. and late... Trying to make a joke. Inside. Vladimir is the big, the mean, the big bad guy. Uh, Link. The snake man. <laughs> oh, God. You know, people call, people say Trump is that guy, the snake man. I'll think of his name in a minute. And I'm on that page on this other computer screen here, it and says he's referencing a computer a screen we haven't book seen. Sell 10 million copies without any advertising except word of mouth. Discover why the Ringing Cedars series are captivating readers the world over. Indeed, uh, I could be some horny stuff on there. The Anastasia books about 10 years ago. Uh, when they were first coming He's out an old English, cedar head. I, got, I ordered five this of them. Guy. What? And you can get them for free. You can get an EPUB for for nothing. Over at the archive.org, dude. Four of them came, and one was back-ordered. Uh, I read those four in four days. Whoa. And then the two back-ordered... The, the back-ordered one came with the next one, book six. And I read both of those in a couple of days. Uh, and the others, of course, came in the same. Came Some pretty light word. reading, so it's not that impressive. English. No. The books were written initially in 1995. Uh, the first book ah. was written in 1995 when 94, made contact right? with this amazing lady named Anastasia who had never been to... She had lived in the wilderness and was raised by animals. She was uh, raised by TV. Far and large, uh, she had no connection with the outside world. She lived off the land uh, in conjunction with animals who uh, 
uh, bears and lions and tigers. And okay, I'm bored of this guy. Son, uh, just not paying attention. About an EPUB is where roughly you drink about alcohol. Or 20 years old by now, I would think. EPUBs Although were invented nine years ago. Him, I have to do more research. Right, this guy's boring. Kung Fu. Okay, this one's called Kung Fu Masters. Um, Kung Fu Master Herbalist Acupuncturist, and his page is Anastasia Ringing Cedars Books. So there's a lot of these sites, uh, people with the Ringing Cedars name, and they just, you know, I don't know if that's copyrighted, I guess because it's over in Russia, we can just kind of do whatever the hell with the name. It's not a proprietary thing, so anyone can fire up on YouTube and be a Ringing Cedar guy, just like this guy. What's up, YouTube? So today we're <laughs> discussing the chapter Bugs in the book Anastasia. <laughs> All right, dude, come on. You got to up the energy level a little bit on this video. Today we're reading about bugs and the Anastasia bug. First, one thing you know about bugs, and we learned this on the meat stream episode, all the vegans are killing the bugs because they're eating all their food, which are plants. All the bugs are dead, thanks to those vegans. Anastasia is a kung fu master. <laughs> you may be wondering why I'm so obsessed with these books, and this is why, because each of us has the capability to be as die? amazing and <laughs> as her, or even better. If we just free ourselves, if we just allow our children the freedom to grow up unhindered okay. by societal greed. Okay, shut up. Uh, yes, Anastasia die. That's an interesting question. Uh, th that could be at the last, could be towards the end of the books. Um, she probably just vaporized into a beam and flew off into the air. It'd be kind of funny if, um, if, if she went with Vladimir to the big city. It was like, Anastasia visits the big city. And then she starts to wither away. And he com she comes home and she's like, I need my cedar nut elixir and uh, she needs the cedar trees to stay alive and she dies uh, in, in Vladimir's uh, loft apartment <laughs> and uh, Pop Deluxe says that Shadows of the Empire is indeed a book but I haven't found any data on how many copies sold and as we know that's not a part of the extended universe anymore it's uh expanded whatever and uh, none of that stuff happened and you know i would love to know i would love to see some expanded universe of the honest of the cedar nut the cedar nut verse and instead we comprehend the main thing which is joy in life and its co-creation she knows how to heal she uses herbs in the raw state to heal wounds and she uses live to, bugs I love to, to use unblock herbs in the raw states and organ and channels you know what that I mean. offer disease. In the tenth book, she tells us how to unblock the same channels from Chinese medicine using a hot sand bath. What I usually do to unblock the channels is I go into my TiVo. She's killed in a fight against a cedar nut hater called Moriarty. <laughs> okay, so we need to learn about cedar nut products. We're getting towards the end of the show. And we haven't got into... We need to get on the Megray LLC. Come on, that's where the cool stream began. Um, some of you may know from the first episode, we talked a lot about cedar nut toothpaste. And we also did an episode, kind of a pilot episode that was never recorded, will never be seen or heard by human ears or eyeballs, where we found cedar nuts live on the air. Uh, no one was watching, thankfully, because it's a very bad show. But we did... We were tripping around the Russian Google Maps and we found an eco village and that's how we came across the cedar nuts. Can you believe that? And that was the inspiration to start it all. It was the cedar nut toothpaste over at Megray LLC. And now we got this cool video. Cedar uh, nut toothpaste. <laughs> Love this music. Oops, I muted the wrong thing. What am I doing? Cedar nut toothpaste. That's okay. We got to put that on the soundboard. Cedar nut toothpaste. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Chicken bone, chicken bone, chicken bone. What's inside? What's inside? It's a cedar nut toothpaste, baby. 
Inside paper package you yeah. will find plastic paste cube. In our case it is 60 milligram good looking cube. Under the Ooh, a good looking tube of that toothpaste, baby. There is a protective seal for toothpaste protection against hair. is it for this is kind of like those alien videos of that guy rick uh, whatever his name was where he talked and i thought about doing that as an intro for anastasia which was what is she what did she come from and we're gonna change this music let's go back into some funky music um who is she where did she come from would you invite her to meet your mother and yes, of course you would with Anastasia, but that is a similar video to this, um, but it's about cedar nut toothpaste. Would you want cedar nut toothpaste to meet your mother? Let's see. This is toothpaste for everyday use. It doesn't have whitening effect, but it freshens breathing. It doesn't have whitening effect. natural oral care. As the package says, vitamin E, which prevents caries why. and strengthens tooth enamel. Natural Tooth cedar nut powder contribute to Sexy the efficient toothpaste. and careful removal of plaque with the help of abrasive components. As this organic toothpaste has cedar resin, it strengthens gums and help prevent so caries because of antibacterial and immune active cedar wood you're basically substances. Uh, brushing your teeth with uh, cedar sap, and it's all mixed up with crushed up cedar nuts, and so that'll get your teeth nice and clean. This natural cedar toothpaste is good for periodontal disease prevention as well. What are the ingredients? Ooh, it's so as we good. mentioned before, this toothpaste consists of three main ingredients, cedar resin, essential mint oil, and grounded cedar nut shell. All right, so you like that. That's the list of ingredients. You got cedar nut resin, mint, of course, you gotta have some mint. You gotta have some flavor in there. If it's toothpaste, it's gotta be mint. And you know, me personally, I think I would go with the pure stuff, the pure shit, the hardcore stuff, which is just pure, straight up cedar flavoring. But they put some mint in there. That makes it taste good. And then you got the crushed up cedar nuts. You gotta have those to help exfoliate your teeth, which is, I, I think, that's what you do with toothpaste. Other ingredients, cedar oil, glycerin, demineralized water, glycerin. ground cedar oil cake, Too sexy. We're not bring it to meet my mother. cedar essential oil. As you can see, this toothpaste there are contains more ingredients. only natural and organic ingredients and is the best choice for true organic product lovers. Yeah, cedar we love those. Toothpaste ag contains only natural ingredients. Now what I was it hoping to find... SLS, Shut up. What I was hoping to find was a video of someone using the cedar nut toothpaste. Um, but the closest I could find is this video. And examining the tube, and I just kind of want to show you the smell and the taste. It tastes delicious, man. There it is, squirting it on the toothbrush. Look at that stuff. Looks great. It's good for you. It'll get you nice and clean. There it is. I wish we could just turn that camera around and show what that looks like scrubbed all over your pearly whites. Look at the consistency of that. Yeah, that stuff sticks together. It's like pine tar, just pure <laughs> yum. Just black, black as night. Put some of this pine tar on your teeth. I mean, hell, if you're Look at that, it just kind of sits directly on top of the uh, of the toothbrush there. All right, so we're gonna go back to the source where we started it all. Um, oh, before we do that, I found this weird website too, which is a lady, this website is called Anastasia is me. <laughs> uh, she claims that she is Anastasia. She is the one true woman herself. And there's a little bit of text here. If you translate it, it's just kind of a little hello, welcome to my website. Anastasia is me. The guy wrote a book about me. 
He assaulted me in the woods. He's a freak. He's a nasty man. And then the rest of the website. You know, they really tease you with some of these pages, and there's just nothing on this website. It's kind of a cool, kind of a cool page. It's like charcoal toothpaste. It's doo doo. Cedar nut tube. Just mix the toothpaste with the oil. Mmm, that's a good point. But what you're missing there, my friend, is you're going to want um, those cedar nutshells all crushed up and exfoliating your teeth. So for some reason I didn't have this pulled up right away. Back to the beginning. We love this website. Megre LLC, baby. Free shipping from $200? Wow, that's a good deal. Can't get this shit on Amazon. You gotta go to megrayllc.com. This is where this is where Megray himself profits from the cedar nut, just as Anastasia instructed him to to make a website. And he so he went to squarespace.com and he made a damn website called megrayllc.com. Baby natural product, the purest cedar nut oil from Siberian countryside. Hi, how can we help you? And so they'll pop up the little Facebook thing to get you to go in the chat and chat with them, which I have thought about doing because um, because much of the Megray LLC stuff is actually run by Megray, daughter Megray. It's Vladimir Megray's daughter. It's kind of cool. I want to be a weirdo, though, and message this woman from Russia as a bit. Uh, that would be kind of weird and insane, so I'm not going to do that. Hello there. Uh, they didn't find any cedar cones over in 1998. Humble thanks. Sergey Megre. I'm trying to find the blog. Or do we want, I guess we should look at the products. All right, we gotta go back to the products. Let's do do. Cedar toothpastes. All right, why isn't it loading the pictures? What the frick? Cedar toothpaste, $8.99. Don't forget about shipping. And you're going to want to send those with the Russian Post, by the way. That's a little plug for them. Good God. So, refreshing means of oral oral cavity care. This is great stuff. The brown toothpaste composed entirely of natural components obtained because of cedar processing. It has a strong cedar flavor and aroma. Pleasantly freshens breath. Eliminates sharp and unpleasant odors. Maltaste makes the toothpaste suitable for the whole family, including children. Due to the high content of resin, it cures minor wounds and inflammation on the mucous membranes of the mouth. And that's the resin doing that. Uh, inflammation and wounds on the mouth. You might want to try some other th stuff, too. You could put some oil on it, probably get the more pure form of the of the cedar nut healing. But a natural antibiotic... Natural antibacterial properties of resin prevents the growth of bacteria and development of causes. That's what I've been telling you people all along. Get this toothpaste. Don't act now. And the image is not loading. It's kind of weird. Cedar nut oil. Maybe I got too many tabs open. So there's some pure stuff, the purest of pure. Oh yeah, forgot about this. Forgot, forgot about this. Uh, cedar nut pillow. Uh, we got a cedar nut pillow, folks. Can you believe that? This is a new invention over at Megray LLC. Is the pillow filled with cedar nut kernel? Whoa! Six percent off. Nice. Um, yeah, so they came out. They thought, you know, we did the oils, we've done soaps, we've done all kind of the normal stuff that you would do with some of these products. And then they thought, you know what? 
Let's take it up to the next level. Our product engineers over at Megray have been cooking up some new inventions and giving us the, I guess, the cedar nut equivalent of the my pillow, which is the cedar cedar fill, uh, the pillow filled with cedar nut kernel. So it says eco-friendly pillow fill filled with cedar nut kernel. It is hard work to collect cedar nut kernels, but this is the way to keep healing, keep the healing energy of cedar. So you need the cedar nut pillow so that you can get the healing properties. Not because it's comfortable. Oh, oh Lord, no. Uh, it's completely the opposite. <laughs> it's uh, awful to sleep on. You got a terrible night rest, but you'll get healed. When you get the crick in your neck, it sort of offsets uh, with the healing properties. So the pillow's handmade. It's very soft, pleasant to the touch, with warm resin aroma, which creates an atmosphere of comfort, or tranquility, and security during the night. The main feature of the pillow, filled with cedar nut kernel, is its anti-stress effect. So no stress when you're when you're plopping your head down on that cedar nut pillow. Firstly, cedar esters have a calming effect on the nervous system, reduce emotional stress, improve sleep, and recovery process. Secondly, this pillow gives special tactile feelings affecting the nerve endings. Oh yeah, so getting, getting all the feels from the cedar nut pillow today. Can we see that? Can we see that crazy thing? Now, the set includes two pillow, ca two pillow cases made of natural cotton. The top one can be easily removed and washed. That's good. Of course, you got the cedar pendant and the cedar spoon and the seat cushion for your ass. Uh, let's check out these reviews real quick. Five stars. Andrea says, I can't wait to try your products. I wish to afford to buy this pillow as well. The pendant will work magic on me. I'm sure it looks amazing. Thank you for what you do. And then M Admin says, Dear Andrea, thank you for warm words. We are working for you. Subscribe to our news. We make promo from time to time. And then Anna Wynn says, Wonderful pillow. The smell is so amazing. I am born and raised in Ukraine. As I moved to the U.S., I started to forget the Russian language a bit. I picked up the Volume 1 Anastasia book and read it in one sitting. Whoa. People love this book. Afterwards, I started having thoughts in my native language again and even had a dream about thanking someone for writing the story about uh, that thing. The words are beautiful and powerful and touch my soul, even went into my subconscious and dreams. Much love and appreciation to you all. Having some crazy Anastasia dreams with the pillow. That sounds pretty cool. What else? Oh yeah, the cedar pillow, the ass pillow. For when you're on a long trip on the river steamer down the river Ebe, you will want a cedar pillow for your behind. And a perfectly orthopedic uh, cushion for your ass. Thin orthopedic seat cushion cover, uh, covered. I hope it's not covered in cedar chips. Chip chimps. <laughs> orthopedic seat cushion filled with cedar chips. The upper material of the seat is a durable natural cotton calico with dense structure. It does not allow chips to penetrate your booty, and at the same time provides good ventilation for when you poot and you fart on the pillow. Smell good. The seat stitching divides it into equally filled sector, and in the process of using, the chip is not crumpled or shifted. It is designed for people with a sedentary lifestyle who spends a lot of time in the office or driving as well as for students. Uh, that wouldn't be for the people out in Siberia on those wonderful um, natural communities, what are they called? The eco-villages. They're not sitting on their butts. They're out running wild, uh, having a lot of fun out in the woods. But if you're a dumb dumb like me, I'm sitting on my ass right now, and I would love a cedar nut butt pillow. If only I could get one. Uh, maybe if, Maybe when we get affiliate um, people we can donate some bits we can start a cedar nut fund and it cost about um, and I'm not going to impugn the name of, of the Russian post but just kind of the reality of shipping and all that's a little bit expensive not, you know no judgment on them they really run a good good program over there but it's a little bit expensive to get things shipped from Russia and 
student. So it's great for students. Chip has a gentle, in comparison with cone leaves, massage effect. So the, the cedar chips are comfy for your butt, uh, but if it was filled with uh, pine cones, it hurt your butt. It hurt your ass to get poked by a pine cone. Ah, the massage effect helps reduce pressure on the spine and keeps the correct posture. This pillow has provides good health benefits and disinfects the air in the room. Uh, it disinfects the air in the room. Unlike when you let out a big fart, which infects the air of the room with the nasty poot stinkiness. Due to the noble design and calm color scheme, the seat matches any interior, including the car. The seat is handmade. So it's brown. Brown kind of goes with a lot. And you, there you got that cedar nuts, the seal of the cedar nut. Right there. And we're reaching that mark where we usually wrap up the show. But we're thankful for all, all of our viewers. But I've got to visit the blog. Load up the blog. There's the pillow. Say goodbye to restless sleep with the pillow filled with filled with cedar chips. Another thing that's great about the cedar nut pillow is that when you're done with it, um, you can use it to like you could sprinkle it on a fire or something. You could use it as kindling. Just toss it in there. Uh, they got free shipping. The toothpaste, the cedar nut, Black Friday, uh, Amazon. World news. Toothpaste I trust. This is the blog. Looking for a good post to wrap up the show. That's what's happening. There's some cedar nuts. Oh, no, those are hazelnuts. There's recipes. Oh, there we go. Tea. She's sipping the tea. <laughs> uh, what first associations have you got when you hear this word? Tea? Well, I think of sipping the tea and spilling the tea on Twitter. First of all, I have the family in mind. Tea is like the unity of people who are close to each other and can share their secrets. Tea is the time to relax. Tea time be right about now uh, with your biscuits and tea. But also, tea is the breath of nature and its precious properties. Uh, but how could it be the breath if it's a liquid? Breath is gas. So are the farts. Man, I love this blog. Kilgore, you dog. <laughs> uh, it's why it's so important to choose such products that can give you healing properties. This is one of the reasons why recently I bought the Ivan Tea with Sea Buckthorn. Uh, my great LLC. Is this cedar nut tea? Sis, come on now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Ivan Tea? No, I don't know what that is. What is that? Uh, what is that? Is it able to... Uh, it is able to significantly significantly improve the work of important life for the body organs. In addition to it, it slows down early skin obsolescence, doing it elastic. Oh yeah, so you get that nice stretchy skin. Uh, this is the Ivan T. Father Frost's Russian Ivan T. Uh, drink with a taste of fermented tea. Do the fermentation. Uh, the t it tastes like black fermented tea will open the healing power. Sounds pretty good. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, thanks to those substances and we sip the tea. I love this tea not only for its healing properties for the organism, but also for its amazing aroma, comma, flavor. I had a tea party with my friends and said no taxation without our representation. Don't tax my tea. And don't tax my cedar nuts. Or else I'll dump it into the river Obe. And I will start a cedar nut revolution. Uh, several girls have already bought Ivan tea with sea buckthorn and treat their family members too. So I'm going to go down to the Whole Foods and see if they have Ivan tea. I'm going to drink some of it. I'm happy that I can unite three things together with the help of Ivan tea. 
health, amazing play flavor, my family and friends. So next time on the next episode of the Cool Stream, instead of that damn iced coffee, of that stale old coffee, um, I'll have some Ivan tea. Oh yeah, we didn't look at these. These are the cedar nut bars. Yas. Just got all the books. Uh, every Sunday they have a tea party with the Ivan tea, and they eat. Oh, now we eat cedar bars on this tea party, and it gives a special feeling of unity with nature and people who eat natural products. And of course, because cedar bars are very tasty, we continue eating them during the whole week. Uh, B Wolf has spilled so much tea in this ep, he needs to place an order to restore his stock. That's right. Uh, we've canceled Vladimir, and we have exposed <laughs> Anastasia as a plebeian. Whoa! Of course, we got orange tea. We got the old uh, taste of childhood. I think uh, we got pesto sauce. So you're going to need your cedar nuts for that pesto sauce. That's kind of the main thing. Such a treasure. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most attractive things in appearance of a woman is her hair. I thought like this because the hair of my mom were really luxuriant. When I looked at her, I was always impressed at her hair, and that's why I always asked my mom uh, since childhood to give me some natural different infusions made of herbs to nourish my hair. So her mom said, hey, check this out. It's called Herbal Essences, and it's the very popular <laughs> shampoo from the 90s. And here you go. And she went in the shower, and she was like, whoa, this stuff smells great. It's my favorite drink. Ivan T. Okay, we've already got that. My savior, Vladimir and Megre and Anastasia. Ah, here we go. Two oo pehes t o o t h p a s t baby. Find out what it means to me. Whoa! This very popular product for absolutely every person. I'm not the exception. Have you ever thought that there is practically nothing natural in a toothpaste that we use? Well, yeah, there's fluoride in it. Freaking rots your brain, turns you into a damn uh, zombie. Gives you that fluoride stare. So that's why we want the cedar nut, because we don't want to be brainwashed. And we want, uh, we want the cedar nut toothpaste, damn it. How much surprised I was when I've seen a toothpaste with Siberian cedar. What is more, the comp composition of it so simple. How can you be doubting that cedar resin won't be the best antibacterial ingredient, ingredient for you? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea how that works. I don't know what the properties are. I'm not a chemist. One more thing I've noticed in this cedar toothpaste with mint, with mint, that it doesn't have bright taste, but it's very mild and natural. So it tastes like shit, basically, is what she's saying. Uh, I'm still going on the show. Um, I'm not giving up. What soap to choose? I'm not giving in to the clock. I want to keep going, and we're going to read this post. We haven't talked about the cedar nut bars. We couldn't end the show without talking about the cedar nut bars. That would be crazy. Uh, that's one of their most popular products, and those are chocolate bars with pine nuts in them. And so all of... Uh, all students all over the world, calm down, Kilgore. All students over the world dream to have regular, substantial meals at least two, at least three, uh, or better, four times a day. However, having a quick snack during the recess is the only possible option. So they still have recess over there in Russia. They play on the playground and stuff. It's kind of fun. Uh, my uh, my boyfriend. Ooh. Don't put the word scraping in your toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to scrape your teeth, but the cedar nut shells are helping clean. So, I'm going to end on a sour note. Uh, she's talking about her boyfriend, Vlad. Uh, okay. Well, my boyfriend, Vlad... 
are not the exception. After the university classes, we have to go to work. I go to the Cedar Nut Factory. And besides having lunch, you always feel hungry and try to find something to eat. We used to buy different fast food, chocolates, buns, but very soon such snacks turned into awful feeling in a stomach. Heartburn. That'll happen. I was lucky to have a friend in my group who ate the cedar bars during recess. We're in the playground. As far as you understand, the next day I already had the cedar bar. What? She went to the store, she went to Whole Foods of Russia and got a cedar nut bar. Good for you. There are four of them. Cedar honey bars, energy with cedar nuts, good mood with chocolate taste and cedar nuts, youth with almond and sesame uh, and cedar nuts, immunity with cranberry and raspberries, and I gotta say, there's gotta be cedar nuts in there if I'm gonna eat it, or else you're nuts. I'm not gonna eat that crap. <laughs> As I'm a great lover of chocolate, I bought four chocolate cedar bars. That day, I had four classes from nine to four, and during every recess, I had a big bite of chocolate cedar bars. I wasn't hungry at all that day. One big advantage of this chocolate bar, that it isn't only very nourishing, tasty, but also contains minimal amount of calories. I found the best snack, and of course, I will try other tasty uh, tastes of cedar bars. And she found another snack, too. Her freaking boyfriend. God. Hmm. Well, tooth and scrape go together in a sentence, and how foolish of me. There's Vlad. Let's get acquainted. Acquainted. We need to get acquainted. Acquainted. Well, now, this is not. Uh, this is not. She's not Meg Gray. Uh, I don't think she's related to Meg Gray. That's a different person. Check them out, Megray LLC on Instagram. You can see their posts. But uh, hello, my name is Elizabeth. I'm 23 years old. I'm a postgraduate student, future teacher of the English language. Well, cool. I live with my groom, Vladislav. There he is. In the center of Novo Sibirsk. It is one of the fastest growing city in the world and the third largest city after Moscow and St. Petersburg. As far as you understand, we don't have an opportunity to be in nature whenever we want, and as all students, we have high mental consumption because we uh, we need to study and work at one time that causes emotional overload. One more problem for our young family was to find the natural source of uh, vitamins and healthy elements. We understand uh, that having crazy pace day-to-day -day living makes it an urgent matter to pay special attention to the health. So they have the gift of nature, the Siberian taiga. Believe that it will give us the power to be active during the whole day. We decided to try the products at Megre LLC, which are straight from the taiga. We liked that there is a big diversity of products, mostly cedar nut stuff, so not that uh, not that diverse. Pretty much all cedar stuff. We will be sharing our opinions, views on the products, and the effect uh, they produce. We hope that our experience will help other people as well. They're over there in over in Novo Zabirsk. Oh yeah, we already went there on the very first. Over on the River Abe. So that's it for the show, and I'll just give you a view of that crazy place of Whole Foods. I call it that right there that's good that mysterious place russia and siberia and i hope that you learned a lot of cool stuff today about the cedar nut and i hope that you'll join me again next week as we tr as we go on and we uh, look at all kinds of weird stuff and what are we going to talk about next week i don't know we'll figure it out and maybe we'll do another cool stream presents. I'm not sure. And I need to finish with a cool song. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll go on the internet again, do a cool stream presents. I'm not sure. And maybe we'll hit affiliate. I don't know. We'll see. And we'll see you next week over on the cool stream. 
And here we're flying around the tundra, and we're... This is us. We're Anastasia, Pleiadian lady. And I'm going to pause to do this. We're flying around in our freaking UFO over Siberian taiga. Do ba do 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 Thanks for watching, and great show once again. Sorry, I <laughs> lost my temper. It's cool. I get it, you know. She's nice. She's got a boyfriend. So, Kilgore, I know what you're thinking, but get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Cool stream you got here. It would be a shame if anything were to happen to it. I'll say. Boom! We're going to do a special credits segment. And it should be more uh, smooth when I do this. Instead, I'm just going crazy, being a going crazy. All right, so, all right, we'll see you next week on the cool stream, and we'll play you out to end the show. We'll play the credits, the famous credits sequence, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place, over on the cool stream. Get you some cedar nut products, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bow.